Hey, welcome in. Thanks for joining. I'm Tyler and I'm here with Tony. We just finished watching the last day of the NFL draft and, uh, you know, that might be the last live sporting event we have for a couple months. Tony, how are you feeling? A little bittersweet. Uh, you know, it's back to the old quarantine life without, uh, without live sports. So, uh, I enjoyed the draft. I, I, I had a lot of fun watching it. It was a big sense of normalcy and it was good to see a lot of Alabama players get selected. I saw, you know, the I don't even think the seventh round started, and I saw some tweets that people were firing off. This draft was better in a lot of ways than other drafts. Did you think that? Were, were you watching it and, like, this, they should do it this way from now on? I mean, I don't know if they should do it this way. I think a lot of times, you know, uh, have you ever been on a road trip and you get, like, a gas station hot dog mm-hmm. and you think, man, this is the best hot dog I've ever had in my life? I just haven't eaten yeah. it forever. Yeah. You know? um, that's, that's kind of uh, – <laughs> that's kind of the feeling maybe I think that a lot of people might be having. I do think that the draft ran better than expected. Mm-hmm. And I think, it, you know, it was, it was a definite success, but I, I don't know. I, I'd have to go back and watch another draft the mm-hmm. old way. It just seems like, you know, mm-hmm. um, I was, I left the draft happy. And I think that that's what you should leave the draft. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it should be, you know, there wasn't any, everyone talked about the glitches or the, the mm. technical difficulties there wasn't that it was it was a pretty yeah. you know smooth draft and I think Roger Goodell handled it pretty well and sh- there was hiccups here and there but it almost kind of made it charming in a way mm. you know and it's, it's kind of felt like we were all in it together just trying to get through it and trying to make it work and it, and it did work yeah I just I can't get over that analogy so this draft was like a gas station hot dog I, sure, I guess that's... you could say that yeah a good gas station hot dog though um that's great. Uh, yeah, you know, I agree. I, I think there were times when I honestly forgot that this draft was different, especially when you get to day three. I think, uh, you know, it's easier to sort of just be like, oh, this is a normal draft. I'm just watching, you know, their six picks behind uh, in their commentary. And, and, and you just can kind of like forget it. It, it yeah. was definitely more noticeable in the first days, first two days. But yeah, I thought it was good. It was fun to watch. Um, you know, by the time you are watching this, uh, everyone will probably have clear updates on these guys. But obviously, you know, uh, we, I think, expected at least one or both of Shaheem Carter and, and Jared Maiden to uh, get selected somewhere today. So that was a little bit of a surprise that uh, both missed out. Yeah, and, and, and Jared Maiden signed as an undrafted free agent with the San Francisco 49ers. So he's got a good fit right there, uh, a winning team. Um, and a really good defense as well. Uh, You know, if he can stick on there, I think, you know, that'd be really exciting for Alabama fans. And I'm sure Shaheem Carter, like you said, maybe by the time you guys see this video, he'll have a new team. Maybe even Matt Womack too. Mm. He's another guy that, you know, that I think could probably get on with a, with an NFL team. A little bit surprised that Jared Maiden and Shaheem Carter weren't Mm. selected late, or at least one of them wasn't Mm -hmm. selected late, but um, those are talented guys that will be able to prove themselves. Um, perhaps that they were hurt a little bit by not having a pro day or something like that. Yeah. I, and I have to think that absolutely, especially with Maiden um, probably did negatively impact, you know, his draft stock just because he didn't really have the chance to show anybody. Um, but sort of to move on, you know, obviously we just finished the draft uh, and that made us sort of think about, you know, what, what guys could Alabama be sending to the NFL next year? Who could we be watching and writing about a year from now? And uh you know, Tony, you sort of put together this list of uh, Alabama guys that could go in the 2021 draft, and, and that's our 20 for 20 uh, topic today. So let's just sort of start off. Who do you think is the top guy that could sort of go in the first round next year? I think Jalen Waddell, and when you look at how this draft played out, you've got to feel really confident mm-hmm. for him. I mean, you saw Henry Ruggs be the first pick of the first wide receiver taken, and, and Jalen Waddell kind of compares – you know, really similarly mm-hmm. and, and actually favorably to, to Henry Ruggs. Just I like his playmaking ability once he gets the ball. Uh, I think he's elite, you know, in that level. And then he matches Henry Ruggs' speed. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he also runs a four, uh, a sub 4-3-40 four, um, in, in the NFL Combine. And then he has all this, you know, hype around his name in, in terms of, you know, speed and, and, and measurables. And he's going to catch the same amount of passes mm-hmm. as, you know, Ruggs did. He's got – really good hands like I said great playmaker he also can contribute in special teams as well so he's a guy that I think you know I don't need to tell any Alabama fans how good Jalen Waddell is um Devontae Smith too I think you know Alabama had never had two receivers taken in one draft um before 
before this weekend, and now they're going to have it in back-to-back seasons, barring any dramatic surprise. I, I think both of those guys are surefire first-rounders um, and, and probably surefire top 15 guys if everything plays out the way that we think it's going to play out. And on the defensive side of the ball in the first mm. uh, in the first round potential, I think, you know, you look at a, a Dylan Moses, and I think you also look at a Patrick Sertan the second. Those, those guys are going to be the leaders of the defense, and I think that, you know, um, they've got pretty good shots of, of being first rounders. So I think you could see another four players get drafted in the first round. Obviously things can change. Uh, you know, some people could jump up into that first round range and these are just my projections, but um, I kind of see it around that four range next year, just taking an early look. Yeah, absolutely. And just sort of looking through your list, I, I do think those probably are the four guys that have the strongest case. Um, just to sort of recap, you have Waddle um, currently. You, you project him as sort of a top ten guy. I, I I think that's a pretty good comparison. You, you know, you bring up the rug standpoint. Uh, just from a film aspect alone, Waddle's probably going to have better film than Rugs had going into it. So, um, yeah, it's hard to imagine Waddle isn't going to go in the top ten, um, especially because the receiving the the class of receivers in next year's draft it, I just can't imagine it's going to be what this year's class was I mean this year's class they were drafting guys in the third and fourth round that I was like that guy's still there yeah definitely I, I, this is going to be a, a this last past draft class is going to be a, a historic draft mm-hmm. class for receiver and, and tackle as well but those two positions we talked uh before this video we've talked a lot about just how stacked both those classes mm-hmm. are. And um, I think that's, it's going to benefit Waddle. Just teams might need a receiver mm-hmm. more. Uh, it's kind of hard to predict top 10. It, it really just going to d- depend on in terms of needs there. I, I think mm-hmm. he has a really good chance in, in, in saying that I think he has a really good chance to be the first receiver taken. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, you have Devonte Smith right there. You know, you have him as a top 15, all the sort of same caveats apply. You know, we don't know how many teams need receivers that are going to be sort of in the top 15 picks. But it's hard to imagine Devontae Smith not being second or the third receiver off the board even. And uh, You're going to have actually, the case as well from LSU. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, there, there will be people out there as well, and I, I have to go through the names to, to really go through, you know, who's going to be out there. But, um, but like, yeah, the, I think that they're going to – it's a talented bunch. I think one of the things maybe you look at the Alabama players uh, is height. You know, they, they don't really have a, a tall guy out there. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe if there's anything that's going to hurt Waddle, it's the fact that he's not the tallest receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a team would feel that, you know, that might limit him, you know, on the on the perimeter. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't I don't feel that. I think he's a guy that can kind of shift around anywhere. But um, if he does limit himself to only a slot guy, then I could see his stock falling a little bit. Mm-hmm. Still, still a surefire first round pick. Yeah, absolutely. And I actually think, uh, after you look at how many guys went in the first round and you look at like, you know, CD lamb, even he sort of fell a little bit in the first round. Uh, maybe Devonte Smith really did make the, the best decision coming back, um, improve some film. Maybe the receiving class is a little weaker. And, you know, I mean, if the receive if there's just not that many good receivers, these guys are going to fly off the board even earlier in the first round next year, probably. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah I, I think he made the right decision. You know, you mentioned two defensive guys. You mentioned Dylan Moses and, and Patrick Sertan. I might argue that Patrick Sertan could be the first Alabama player taken in next year's draft, but I think he has a lot of work to do if he's going to get there. Right now, I think he's definitely got to prove himself. Yeah, I mean, look at it this way. I mean, Minka Fitzpatrick didn't even go top 10 mm-hmm. for Alabama, and look how productive he was in his Alabama career. So um, I think – uh, from a talent perspective, Patrick Sertan's right there. He, he's mm-hmm. got that kind of talent. I think he needs to put it together a little bit more. He's, you know, he struggled at times. He's been a little bit inconsistent. I think if he takes that step and takes that, you know, kind of Minka step mm-hmm. and becomes the defensive leader, then sure, he could be a top 10 pick. I have him just in the first round. I, I didn't give him that top 10 mm-hmm. or top 15 dis- distinction. And the reason why I did that is just because I'm looking to see, you know, some more consistency from, from him. That being said, though, he's a guy – it wouldn't shock me if he climbed up into those mm. you know, first few picks of the first round next year because he's got that talent. We, we've known that since um, since he's came to Alabama. I think mm-hmm. he has like 25 starts, uh, uh, you know, in two years. So that, that's crazy production. And, you know, he, he's gotten on the field really quick. And 
Um, just from a measurable standpoint, he's got everything you want from a defensive back. So we'll see if he can translate that to the even next level where he, you know, becomes a real elite cornerback. Yeah, he's just got a bit of, you know, he's still got to make sort of that leap from really good, you know, defensive back that Alabama's had to sort of that next level, that that all-time great that, that Minka and Landon Collins and, and some of these other guys that, that have passed through here under Saban have, have kind of hit their last year. Um, but, yeah, and, and just to sort of let you all in, I, I kind of pushed back before we started talking and recording. I, I pushed back on Tony's grade for Patrick, but I – you know, he said, look at Minka. Minka didn't go top 10 either. And that, I completely missed on that. I totally, you know, I thought Minka was, was like seven, eight, six. And, and thinking back, uh, you know, I remember watching now that Tony points that out. And I remember wondering, why is Minka still on the board? So, yeah, uh, for whatever reason, some of these uh, corners and safeties, sometimes they just stay on the board longer because that's not what teams need. Um as far as Moses, I, I was curious, did you, uh, was there any concern, you know, you, you gave Moses just the first round grade as well. Um, you think even if he's healthy next year, teams might, might ding him a little bit just because he had that significant injury. Maybe they look at him like a uh, back of the half of the first round guy. Well, that, that, that's just what I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. It's just tough to see how he's even going to respond to that injury. I, I assume he's going to respond to it well, but that is a major injury and we haven't seen him since. Mm-hmm. So, um, it does pop up as a red flag just because it's, it's always going to when you miss a season. Uh, that being said, I expect Dylan Moses to be a butt kiss award, you know, candidate and uh, finalist. And um, I'm expecting a big season from him. So I, I think, you know, he, he'll be comfortably in the first round. I think he was a fringe player. I do not think he would have gotten into the first round if he would have left for this year, mm-hmm. but I think he's an early day to, player if he was to leave even after the injury wow just based on potential you know I don't think he slipped that I I don't see him slipping into the third round if he was to leave for this year so um I think he'll be able to kind of answer any kind of concern and, and solidify himself into the first round wow I did not I've not given that thought but that sounds like a bold prediction to me um I mean I just can't see if, yeah. if, I, if I have a team I can't see you know skipping over Dylan Moses with two picks, you know, Mm -hmm. every single team to have to do that. I just, it it would really surprise me. Yeah. I mean, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you think about it, sometimes these guys, even with injuries, they they do go just because, and if ever there was a guy that's proven he has the talent, it's Moses. He definitely has the first round talent. Um, To just sort of keep going, you know, I I think, you know, there's probably going to be two names that people are going to be thinking about that they're like, you know, why don't you have this guy projected in the first round? I think the guy that a lot of people are going to say right off the bat is, where's Najee? Yeah, Najee, I, just, I think he's going to have an elite year. I just don't think – I mean, look, you had one running back selected in the, in the first round, and, and bigger backs are not in vogue in the NFL right now. Mm. You know, I mean, I know Derrick Henry uh, kind of – he proved that they have a spot, but when, you, when you're drafting teams, it's, it, teams aren't going with those bigger backs. I think there's a reason why Clyde edwards Hilaire was the only back selected uh in the first round i'm not saying that Najee's not going to get picked i just mm-hmm. don't think that he's going to be a first rounder because i i, I wouldn't i'm not sure that anybody his size is going to be mm-hmm. a first rounder at that point i think he'll be an early second rounder i mean look at where um derrick henry rent was mm-hmm. i think in the 40s somewhere around there to tennessee so i i, I kind of see Najee having a similar kind of following the similar he could actually go a little bit higher than than Derrick Henry went mm-hmm. depending on how he does but um I kind of see him as an early second guy yeah and if you've watched any of these videos literally almost any of them you've seen that Tony and I have argued over Najee Harris this entire 20 for 20 series so far do you say the first no that's gonna stop the, I'm gonna break the trend today uh yeah I think Najee Harris might have a first round talent but when you just look at how the NFL is the emphasis they're placing on on running back or the the lack thereof and the value they're assigning these guys in the draft. Um, like, yeah, Derrick Henry should have gone higher in the draft when, when he was there, in my opinion. Um, and, but yeah, I, I agree. I just don't think that I think whether it's because teams don't need running backs uh, later in the draft or because there's scarcity at other positions, like maybe offensive tackle or, or, or receiver or, or whatever. I think guys are, I think, people are just going to pass on, on running backs like Najee Harris. And yeah, I think, um, you know, maybe only one back 
maybe no backs go in the first round next year. At the end, I think probably will be picked in the first round. Yeah, but even he's then, not like, as big of a back as Najee is, yeah. I think it's going to help Najee that he can catch. Um, mm-hmm. Improving that is going to help a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think you could see at the end, and, and there might be a couple that go in the first round. But I just, I don't see Najee being that kind of guy that goes. Mm-hmm. In the first round. Yeah, and I. Hey, I think he's going to break the all-time rushing record. I think he's going to do incredible things this this coming season. But even I think, yeah, uh, I I think he's probably uh, a, maybe even a mid-second round guy just because, again, you just see teams, they pass on running backs, especially, like you said, these, these bigger guys. I think if he catches enough balls, I think that's his only shot. I, I think if he just becomes a much bigger deal in the passing game somehow um, – then yeah, maybe he has a chance, but even then, yeah. The the other guy that and people might not be thinking of him originally, but uh when they look at your list, they're gonna wonder why Alex Leatherwood for the second round. I think he's probably the other guy that, that's in the mix. He's the one you could sell me if there are gonna be five first rounders mm-hmm. at the moment. He's definitely the one that you could sell me, uh, would be that fifth one. Um, I just think he has more to prove and I, I don't necessarily I it's easy to it's easy to get carried away and say Alabama is going to have this many first round guys. I, I tried to be as realistic as I could mm-hmm. with this one. Um, I don't think he's as polished as a, of a prospect as as Wills was at this time, and so I think um, I, I I tend to you know just just mm-hmm. rate him a little bit behind that. And so I think he's another guy like like Najee that I could see going in the mm-hmm. earlier second part. But you know, there's a lot of good tackles, um, mm-hmm. and and it's a position that, you know, he's going to have a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. If he, if he polishes himself up and, you know, obviously Alabama has a great offense and people look at that. Yeah, sure. I could see him moving up and he could move up really high. He's a guy that out of all these guys I mentioned, like he could move into the top 10, you know, Mm -hmm. you look at the tackle position, it is a position of need. There's a lot of competition every Mm -hmm. year, but it's a position of need. So if he does polish up his game, I wouldn't, you know, he could be the first Alabama player taken on, on this list. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, at the moment, I, I kind of looking at where he was and where Wills is, you know, I, I think he's farther away. So I, I, I kind of have him just missing out on the first round. Yeah. And, and I think that's a fair assessment right now. I think also the, the hardest thing when you do these projections a year out is we just, we don't know what guys are need that, you know, Leatherwood might be a guy that everybody says should go mid to late second round based off his performance. But if, enough people take tackles in the first 15 picks there might be a team at 20 that just says hey Leatherwood's not going to be there when we pick in the second round and we need a tackle more than we need anything else and and sometimes that's how the draft works that's why guys like Najee um don't get projected maybe because there's like there's a million running backs we can wait and then you look at tackle that's always a position that teams are looking for and they almost always go in the first two rounds see and I don't even think tackle – there's not even that many tackles left by the time you get to day three. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, admittedly, it's hard to do these at this mm-hmm. point in time. You know, you, you just – you have no idea what these players are going to be like. You have no idea what these offenses are going to be like. Um, so, yeah, a lot of these are, you know, kind of take take it with a grain of salt, basically. Uh, but that that's just my consensus of, you know, from what I've been hearing about Leatherwood and then, you know, just um, – kind of what I'm seeing with my own eyes. I think he's just outside that elite caliber mm-hmm. right now. So I want to go, uh, we're not going to do the whole list today, but I, I do want to finish up with just sort of some rapid fire thoughts. Cause you have two guys on here that, that kind of stand out to me. Um, you have Mac Jones, a quarterback and you have him as maybe a second or third round guy as a, as a day two guy. Just real quick. Why, why do you see him in that sort of range? Mac Jones is a wild card. Uh, you look at some of the, uh, you look at some of the mock drafts that are coming out right now, just, you know, the early ones uh, you have Trevor Lawrence, you have Justin Fields. And then there's, you know, some people say Newman out of Georgia. I, I personally think Jones is a better quarterback than Newman mm-hmm. out of Georgia. So, I mean, like I could see uh, a situation where he could even maybe slip into the first round. I would, wasn't necessarily comfortable calling him a first round pick, but, mm-hmm. um, but he's a guy that I think with a big year has the most mm-hmm. to gain out of anything, anybody on this list. Um, and so that's what I that that's why I put him there. I think you know he's a guy that he might see his grade and be like, oh, I can be a second round pick as a quarterback. I, I might take it, you know. Mm. Um, and then shoot, I mean, he might be a guy that thinks that maybe I could be in the the late first and and sneak into there. I could see him as being one of those guys that you, you know, 
you see mocked in some drafts. Maybe he ends up in the second round, but he, you know, had the possibility of being a first round mm. pick. So um real interested to see uh, how he plays out. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think we've agreed a little bit too much on, on today, uh, mm-hmm. on this video. So I'm going to push back a little bit. I don't quite see day two. Uh, if Mac Jones wants to go to the NFL, uh, you know, I, I, he seems like a solid day three, maybe even early day three guy. Um, you know, we saw a couple uh, big name quarterbacks that, while not the best, certainly proved that they're capable. Um, fall to day three and, and even plummet to, to late in day three today. Um, and I think he's going to be smart about it too. If, if, if there's a doubt like that, mm-hmm. I think he'll come back um, for another year. And he's in a unique situation as well because you look at him, even if, let's just say um, he's worried about keep, even if he does have a draftable year and he's worried about keeping his uh, spot with Bryce Young, mm-hmm. he's a guy that's already graduated from Alabama, so he could go anywhere he wanted mm-hmm. uh, if right. that was the case. He's got so many options, and so um, I think he's in a really good spot. So all he has to worry about now is just having that good year and, and kind of, uh, he, like I said, he has the most to gain. Yeah, and as Tony and I have said on, on our recent for 2020 series, we, we do think Mac Jones will probably be the starter at this point. That's where, that's where we'd go, and we think he'll have a good year um tony thinks he'll have a little bit better year than i think so uh, that's where we differ here um and then the last guy i just want to mention before we get out of here you you know you have lebron ray and you know you sort of have him in the third round right now which is uh you know we saw some guys go in the third round for alabama um you know we saw anthony jennings and, and terrell lewis i think both went in the third round right just yesterday i'm, I'm yes, kind of yeah, yeah so you're, you're basically you have lebron ray right in that same mix that sounds about right right now but i don't know lebron ray just seems like a guy that still has a lot left to prove if he's gonna go there yeah I mean, he's a guy that i and i have no idea he's a guy that you know came out highly rated out of out of high school um but he's in the same kind of boat as, as dylan as uh actually in, in, he's in the same boat in in terms of we're looking to see how he's going to come back off the of season ending mm-hmm. injury on the other hand, he doesn't have that one season that Dylan has no. to prove that he can be elite. So he that he's got a lot to prove. I don't think he's quite at that level of a star player, but he's a guy that I think could come out and and you know be a day two selection, and maybe that you know that would be enticing for him. So I, I put him on the list as a guy that I thought you know mm. could go in there, and uh, he might even be one of those guys that has a surprisingly good year, mm. and you might even see him sneak up. I mean, look. Look at the defensive line at Alabama with Deron Payne and then Quinn mm-hmm. Williams. Both those guys have rose to prominence very quickly. So mm-hmm. I think LeBron Ray is in a position where maybe he could do the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think LeBron Ray, a lot of potential. Um, just And again, like, like, like a lot of these guys we mentioned, uh, if they're going to cash in in the NFL draft next year, they really got to have a good year of film uh, and really prove themselves to some uh, NFL decision makers. Uh, well, I think that about does us for today. You know, we've 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 talked about the draft we just watched. We've talked about the draft that we're wa- we're going to be watching about a year from now. Um, you know, let us know what you think of these. I definitely encourage y'all to go check out Tony's list. Like I said, we didn't get to everybody. There's a couple names still left to look at. Um, you can look at his grades. You can look at sort of a little bit more on uh, why he justified those those grades a uh, year out. And uh, let us know what you think. Let us know if you agree. And most importantly, comment and let us know who you think the uh, first guy to get drafted in the first round next year will be. Tony and I said it'll be Jalen Waddle. Maybe y'all agree, but I could really make the case that, that Sertan really jumps up if he has the year that we think he could. Um, so those would be the two guys in play, but I don't know. I mean, Devontae Smith is there. So comment, let us know what you think, like, and uh, subscribe so you can keep up with these videos. We're going to uh, be pumping out some content now that we have some some draft stuff to look at. You know, we can look at where these guys are going. We can update y'all on guys like Jared Maiden and Shaheem Carter. So follow along to keep up with that. And uh, thanks for joining us today.